Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 2nd of November, 2015, and this is episode 153, 1666. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. This weekend was Halloween. If you were, I mean, I think it's everywhere, but if you're in the States, we go a little crazy about it. Um, Halloween is kind of, for me, the kickoff of the the autumn, winter giving season because there's no other day of the year where kids can go around, like any kids can go around and strangers give them things just because. And um, I don't know. I, it's fun. It was fun. We went, the children... Um, Gabriel was definitely a Ninja Turtle, and during the week, Mara kept flip-flopping whether or not she wanted to be a butterfly or a Little Red Riding Hood, so I did not make her costume until five minutes before we walked out the door. Okay, it was probably more than five minutes. It was probably more like 15, but she went as a butterfly. Okay, so the trick-or-treating part wasn't fun for me. It was fine. It was nice. The kids had fun. We walked around with two girls from down the street and, um, and their grandma. And it, I mean, that part wasn't fun. It was fine, but you know, it was fun for them. And that was the important part. But then we got back to our street, our cul-de-sac, and, um, one of our neighbors had set up a bonfire in the middle of the circle and there were a whole bunch of chairs so we all sat around and chatted and there were two houses across the street from each other um not across the street across the cul-de-sac from each other so either side of the cul-de-sac had two houses that were full of food for party stuff um i didn't go in either of them because when i got back to the i stopped to talk to one of my neighbors on my way into the cul-de-sac and the kids went in and um attacked steve he had been passing out candy and um, I stopped to talk to one of my neighbors and then talked to her for about 45 minutes. So when I finally came to sit in the fire circle, um, Mara didn't want to play with her friends anymore. She just wanted to cuddle and then she fell asleep on me in 10 minutes. It was adorable. So I didn't go anywhere because I was sitting with Mara on my lap. And children gain like 20 pounds when they fall asleep. They do. It was fun. Anyway, that was the whole point. I hope that if you celebrated, you had fun. And if you didn't celebrate, you had a good week. I'm going to have a really long chatty section right here at the beginning. Because whatever, it's my podcast and sometimes I need to. So on top of trick-or-treating and stuff, I also went to Gabriel's class party, which was super fun. I, um, I didn't get to go to his class parties last year because there were too many parent volunteers for kindergarten because it's kindergarten and... Everybody wants to be a part of kindergarten, but this year they didn't have enough volunteers. And I was like, oh, pick me, pick me. So I got to go and that was fun. I was helping set out the food because the food's the most exciting part for the kids. So we, we were setting out the food before the kids got back from their elective class sort of thing. And um, Gabriel walked in and he was like, mom, hi. It was very exciting that he was so excited to see me. And they also had that night, it was Friday, um, the school had a, a fall festival sort of thing. So they set up um, a whole bunch of games in the gymnasium and there was food and coloring stations in the cafeteria and um, a haunted hallway and there was a petting zoo in the courtyard and the book fair was going on and... They had carriage rides. It's the first year they've done carriage rides. It's the first year they've done a petting zoo too, I think. Um, both which were pretty cool. But we got to the carriage ride at the exact right time. The first the first ride was about to go off. And um, there was enough room for us to get on. And more people could have gotten on, actually. I think there were two more seats available, depending on, you know, size of humans. Probably four small children could have sat. But, you know... Another two people could have sat, but nobody came out because the carriage ride was on the opposite side of the school for most of the things. And 
we got there and we took our carriage ride. It was about five minutes long, perfect length for elementary school students. And then when we got back, there were at least 30 kids in line and assorted adults. So perfect timing for that. It was, it was fun. The kids have never been on a carriage ride before, so that was exciting for them. It was a good time. It was really, really fun. And of course we went to the book fair and I got them books and I got a book for Gabriel's classroom. Anyway, so knitting podcast. Are you ready to talk about some knitting? I'm not going to show you anything yet because we have the Finisher Frog craft along to talk about. That ends at the end of this month. We're winding it down. Um, I went on to Ravelry yesterday and there were 22 new posts in the finished object thread. I must have slacked from looking at that for a few days. You guys are doing awesome. You're kicking butt and taking names and uh, I'm not doing too shabby myself. I'm pretty pleased with the progress that I've made, although there are two projects that I really, really want to be in that finished object thread that are not there yet. It's very frustrating for me. Um, but after this knit along ends, just a reminder that in December we're doing the ending and mending craft along. It's, um, it's a push to get all of your ends woven in on all of your projects that you haven't done, which I haven't done a bajillion. And I'm thinking, um, for, I mean, it'll probably be a small prize because I don't really want to ship anything around that time. Um, I'm thinking that it'll be like every 10 ends woven in gets a entry and then every piece mended gets an entry. So I have a stack, a stack, I don't have a stack, I have a milk crate full of um, things that could be mended and some of them are knitting related and some of them are not. So I'm going to let it be open to anything. Um, like there's a pair of jeans in there that are Gabriel's that have a dime sized hole in the knee that I just need to patch so he can wear to school and I haven't. So that's on my list. I have socks that need to be darned. Um, I have a reusable shopping bag that has a seam coming apart so that needs to be fixed. So anyway that is going on in December. It's just you know Get ready for the new year with your things fixed or ends woven in so you can gift them to people. Those are my thoughts on that. The rules may change as it gets closer to December. Okay, that's all the administrative stuff. So I have a couple finished objects, but one I'm not going to show you because it's my design cowl and I use Riot of Color in the Rumble Base, which is 7525 Octopus's Garden, and Rumpus, which is 100% Superwash Merino in Waterworks, US size 3, 3.25 millimeter needles. It's kind of a cowl poncho sort of thing. And um, it's out to test knitters, which is good. And I haven't heard feedback yet from them, so I don't know when knitting is, like how knitting is going so far because they have only had the pattern for a very short time. Um, and the deadline is not until the end of the month, I think is what I said. I don't know, I should read my own email over. That was a long time ago that I sent it. A long time ago for me, not a long time ago in knitting time. Because a long time for me is like three days. So yeah, that's out in the world being tested and I wore mine out trick-or-treating and it was very warm and very nice and um, it's a pretty enjoyable knit. Anyway, you can't see it so it doesn't matter. I'll show it to you and talk about it when I release the pattern. The other finished object I have is the Unpronounceable Mitts by possibly the designer's Tina Ku. I mean, that's how the name is spelled, but I just... I'm assuming it's Tina Koo. Again, no ends woven in because that's what next month is for. But here they are, and they are super pretty. Very fast because it's all stuck in it on the palm. It's just got this little panel of 
detail up the side. It's um, small cables and bobbles. Works up really, really fast, as long as you knit on it, of course. The thumbs are, I don't know, the thumbs are really quick. It's just stockinette. There's no, there's one set of decreases, um, but not a lot of shaping. Not a ton of purling either, which makes them really, really fast. I highly recommend this for anybody who needs to make gift knits and um, needs to make things that are fast but wants them to look fancy because, I mean, I think that looks pretty fancy. Let's see if I can get the detail in there. Specs on the on the mitts. I worked them on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. The pattern says to use a 2.5 millimeter needle, which I don't own. So mine are um, a little bit snug on me, which is good because I have big hands and the recipient has small hands. And um, the yarn is Sun Valley Fibers in the 8020, yes, 8020 base in the colorway Woodside Gold. I picked up this week to work on my sweater a little bit. I mean, it's probably decently significant. Oh, I just lost the stitch marker. It's okay. I'll fix it later. Um, let's see. Where... So this is where I was, right here. And then I'm at a part where you work flat, but of course I'm not at the beginning of a row because that would be too easy. So I finished this welt, did this welt, and now I'm working on a second welt. Not a ton of progress, but you know, I made progress and I have a, a plan for working on that sweater. Um, November is National Novel Writing Month, but it is also National Knit a Sweater Month. So I'm not participating in the writing portion because I don't have the brain power to do that this year, but I am going to participate in the sweater portion. I am not starting and finishing a sweater in the month um, that I know of, but in the spirit of the challenge, I will be knitting 1,666 or 67 stitches at least on my sweater every day starting today. Yesterday was not, um, yesterday was a really busy day, so that wasn't going to happen. But starting today, and if I finish my sweater, I have yarn for a sweater for Amanda, so I will be knitting on her sweater if I finish mine this month, which I should if I am able to knit that many stitches, which really isn't that many stitches when you, when you think about it. I'm not, I mean, that's like 10 rows maybe on the sweater. I don't know how many stitches I have on my sweater on the rows right now, but probably about 10 rows would equal that many stitches. Um, which isn't that much. So I'll just make that what I have to work on first every day and then work on whatever else throughout the day. And then my sweater should be finished. It needs to be finished. It's been on the needles way, way too long. I am using Knit Pick Swish Tonal in the Canopy colorway for that and US size six needles, which is 4.0 millimeters. It's a lovely project, lovely sweater. Um, it's called Coat of Many Colors by Sandra McIver. It's from the Knit Swirl book. I, I'm i going to enjoy the fin finished product, and I don't even mind so much the, um, the process of it. I just, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is about it. I think, I don't know. Because other projects are flying off the needles, and this one's just lingering. It's probably because it's for me. I have a really hard time making stuff for myself. Not because I don't want to, I just have a hard time with it. Because I'm like, oh, but I could make this other thing for someone else. I worked pretty diligently on my Frankenstein socks. I wanted to have them finished 
by Halloween, but that didn't happen. Um, I knew it was going to take a long time for the assembling, but I just didn't really think about how long that would take. But I have the first one all put together. So let's, uh, let's show you what it looks like. You have your toe. So that's going different directionally than the foot. And here's where a bunch of pieces come together. The leg, which has a seam up the side right here, and then the cuff. And on the back, there is the heel, which is knitted differently directionally from this ace bandage section. So this is the first sock. There's a lot of grafting involved and um, a lot of mattress stitch involved in putting this together, plus um, two sections called the Bermuda Triangles, which, yeah, you can see because the yarn's different, um, which are short rows. So it's a lot going on to put this sock together, but not bad. Um, I tried on this sock yesterday, and it fits, but the um, this part right here for the ace bandage section, if you're going to knit this sock, make sure that for your increases for the the ace bandage section, make sure that you use a an elastic increase because um, I feel like I'm talking bad about her and I don't want it to sound like that. Okay, so Claire is a pretty new knitter and she didn't know how to make increases. So we showed her and um, it, she she did okay for her first time in increases, but like here she did three stitches into the same stitch loop. So it's just not as elastic as it as it could be. And I have really high um, instep, so it pulls a little bit. Kind of nervous about wearing them because that's tight. Um, worst case scenario. <laughs> I will cut open the steak on the side and figure out a way to um, figure out a way to make that more elastic. I'll make it work, but I am kind of hoping that blocking it helps ease that out. It's not super washable. I haven't worked with non-super washable before, so I don't know if that's going to work. But I'm hopeful that blocking will help that so that it fits better. But anyway, I have a sock finished. I tried to do the parlor knitting for these socks. I cast it on, and then I started knitting, and I got through three rounds, and I tried to open it up because you're supposed to check pretty frequently if you um, to make sure that you're not knitting the two pieces together because the parlor knitting is very similar to double knitting. You hold both strands and you knit with both strands, but unlike double knitting, you do not want those strands to, to cross because you want the two pieces to be completely separate. So I did really well on that for the seconds, but right at the beginning, I had twisted in a couple of places because I was still figuring it out. And I was three rounds into it, so ripping it out wasn't a big deal. But I really wanted these socks done, so I was like, I'm just going to magic loop the feet. So I did. So I just magic looped the, the foot portion. But I really would like to try that parlor knitting because that sounds really cool. So um, before I go there, specs on this, hand dyed yarn, dyed it with Gabriel using Kool-Aid. And um, that's why the sections look so different and so cool. Also the knitting gauge is, um, not so much the gauge is different, but the stitch counts are wildly different for all the pieces. So if you're using a variegated yarn, it will pool differently, which I think is really, really cool. And I used US size one, 2.25 millimeter for all of the pieces. 
I have, for the second sock, I only have the toe put on. Because since I knit these magic loop, I provisionally cast it on the one end like you're supposed to. And then um, you can put this on waist yarn the other end. But since I already had it on needles and I already had the toes finished and I just needed to sew them on, I was like, well, I'll just do that straight off the needles because why would I put it on waist yarn and then put it back on needles if I don't have to? Because it was the last piece to knit. So that's the only part that I have together on the second sock. I am hoping, although it will entirely um, depend on how early I go into work tonight and how many stitches I get knit on my sweater, I'm hoping to have this finished tomorrow so I would need to make decent progress on it tonight. Probably most of the grafting would have to be finished tonight, so that would just be knitting tomorrow. But we'll see. I don't work tomorrow. So I could always finish it then because I'll have plenty of time. Um, so anyway, parlor trick knitting. Really wanted to do it. Didn't because I, I didn't want to have that time constraint on something that I wanted finished. It'll get finished, just not when I wanted it to. But it will be finished within the knit along. And it's a project that had been started before the knit along started. So two entries for me, which is exciting. Anyway, a new project that I started using my child tube sock pattern, not the recipe. I am using the pattern because um, I have never, well, that's not true. I knit Mara socks when she was pretty tiny, but since then I haven't knit baby socks and I can't just slip these socks on somebody and be like, hmm, that'll fit. So I'm using my pattern because it has the numbers for small, tiny feet sizes and I am making socks for my nephew, one of them, my littlest nephew. This yarn might look familiar. It is because I am making his socks to match his mommy's mitts. It's the Sun Valley Fibers Woodside Gold and I'm using US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. And um, I cast on the toes. I'm doing the magic loop, but as soon as I get past the toes and the increases, I am going to do the socks parlor knitting style because I really, really want to try the technique. There's a, um, there's a pattern called two in one socks or something like that. I don't know. And it has been in my queue since I started on Ravelry, basically. I think like the first month I queued it because I was like, oh my gosh, that looks awesome. And it's all about knitting one sock inside the other sock. I don't want to try to do increases while I'm doing that. So I, um, doing the toes separate, but then I'm going to knit because it's just a tube sock. So the rest of it, I'm hoping to do parlor style. We'll see how I feel when I get to the ribbing, because that might be a little bit like, oh, what am I doing? But um, yeah, that's my hope. So hopefully, um, the socks are really small, so I don't know if I'm going to be in progress with them next week, but I will definitely take pictures and maybe record little blips during the week if I feel like I'm going to finish these socks before I talk to you next so you can see the parlor knitting in progress. But um, yeah, I think the, the total, yeah, the total stitch count for each sock is only going to be 36, so they sh they'll be really fast. It'll be like knitting one sock for Steve circumference wise which doesn't take that long. And I am um, more than halfway through the toe. So the putting it on one, one needle will be happening sometime today, probably, again, dependent on my sweater. I worked on a barn racing square. This is number 47 and it is made out of nomadic yarns gumdrop buttons colorway Haley gave this to me she knit a pair of socks out of it and it's so pretty I actually started making a hexapuff using this and I was like no no too pretty to not be a square for me um so I ripped out the hexapuff and cast on a square for myself and I might make a hexapuff using leftovers but I, uh, 
I'll talk about that in a moment. But maybe not. Maybe I won't have enough yarn. Anyway, this is the square and it's super bright and super pretty and um, appropriate pinks. They're not too pinky pink. I mean, if this, if it was just this pink, I would be like, oh, I don't know. That's pretty, that's pretty girly. But because it has a hot pink next to the lime green and then it goes into this cotton candy pink, I'm totally okay with it. I really, really like this colorway very, very much. I made four hexapuffs. Two of them are celebratory. Nope, three of them are celebratory. And one of them is not because I just didn't like this one turned inside out as much. I'm not sure where this yarn came from. This I made a pair of socks out of forever ago. It is the Rock Candy Colorway Lion Brand Sockies. I made Steve's socks um, from the Subversive Socks book. I think they're called Stinky. They said Stinky on the bottom of the beat. This is yarn from Haley from forever ago. And it's got the, um, the garter ridges where the yarn changes color. And uh, as you can see, I didn't just do it across the row. I did it exactly where the yarn changes. So there's the ridge has a break here and this one has a break here because the color changed in the middle of the row. And I kind of like that. Kind of like that. It looks a little crazy. This is Nerd Girl Yarns in the Back to Earth colorway. And uh, I decided that I needed to start another modular knitting project because why not? Because I have so many on the go already and I already have a hard time making enough hexapuffs. But Kay from Bakery Bears started this thing. It was, she's calling it the girly whirly blanket. And when she started talking about it, um, I have already, I had already planned at some point to make another blanket for myself. And I had thought about using just the yarns that I really, really like. Because for the mitered squares and the hexapuffs, um, I'm just using any yarn. And, you know, if I don't particularly love the color, that's fine. It will look pretty in the blanket, but I was thinking maybe for a blanket for me, and even for my barn raising squares, I don't necessarily love all the yarns going into it, but I think it's a nice balance. I mean, the oranges and stuff, I'm like, eh, it's okay. Do I love it? No, but it's not bad. So I, um, I've been thinking for a while about making myself another blanket that's just yarns that I really, really like. Maybe not love, but that I really like. And so she started the girly rolly blanket and I was like, well, that's kind of a cool concept. And then Sarah from, um, oh, I can't remember. Knit Sock Love or something. She has a podcast. She has a shop. She's fabulous. I'm too tired to try to be remembering things without having written them down. Anyway, she, um, she started one too. And I was like, okay, well, I need to steal that idea. So I started a little miter square. And this one I am making on US size ones instead of US size twos, which is what I used for the first one that I made. Um, so the squares are a little bit smaller. It's the same stitch count, but they're a little more dense because I like the, the blankets over here on my chair. I like that blanket, but the, I, I felt like I would prefer for myself something a little more dense, even though that will make it super extra heavy. I'm okay with that. Becca was over for trick or treating and she moved the blanket. She was like, oh my gosh, this is really, really heavy. And I was like, I know. It's a lot of yarn that went into that in a lot of time. Anyway, so the squares are going to be a little smaller. And um, I'll show you my, my little project bag full of yarn. So all of the yarns that I'm putting in, the rule is to make it into this blanket, it has to have either blue or green um, make up a fair chunk of the yarn, which I decide as I go what a fair chunk means. Um, there's one in here that has, I mean, obviously this is 
mostly blue and this is mostly green. But this is like 50-50 blue and then pink and orange. And there's one in here that is yellow with blue speckles. Oh, here it is. So it's just a little tiny bit of blue. And that probably won't make an entire square by itself. I'll probably have to stick it with something else. But um, yeah, I'm, I decide what is blue or green enough. And I'm going to make myself a blanket. I'm not going to do the same mitered square blanket that I did before. Um, I am thinking that I might do something kind of like the hue shift blanket where it is um, blocks going off in separate directions so the diagonals go out like an X. Kind of thinking about that. Not 100% sure I have a lot of time because I have rules. I have rules for my blanket. I can make one square a week if I make a hex puff. I have to make a hex puff first and then I can make a square. And I really want to work on this blanket. So my other rule is if I make seven hexapuffs in a week, I can make a second square on my blanket. So hopefully I'll be making lots of hexapuffs and getting other knitting done. I don't know. Where do I think I'm going to get this time from? I have no idea. But I do. I think I'm going to have time for all this knitting and spinning. Um, which, by the way, I've been doing this week. I made pretty good progress on the purple fiber, but I'm not going to show you. I've done some spinning on the jaws and maybe some spinning on the Painted Tiger. I can't remember, but I'm not going to show you any of that. I worked on it. I just, you know, don't feel like it. Anyway, that is my mitered square blanket because I needed another modular project, obviously. And um, if I pick out a yarn from that basket and, or the, the bag, whatever you want to call it, and I decide that I don't actually like it for my blanket, then I just won't use it. And that's fine. I just, um, for right now, everything that has blue or green in it is just in that bag. But if I don't love it when I get to it, I just won't use it. And that will be fine because it's going to be a really long-term project and it's okay to be picky about things for myself every once in a while. I have some new things. Um, first, reading. I'm reading the same things. I didn't finish anything. I didn't start anything new. I didn't do a ton of reading, although I made okay progress in both of the books. So, yeah. I'll just get that out of the way. So new things is where I'm going to end this week. And all of my new things are Becca related. So she came over for trick-or-treating and um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, maybe a little over a month. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. At some point in the past, she was like, hey, I have some disposable cash and I would like to get you a present just because. I was like, oh, okay, that's really cool. And she asked me what I would like. And I said, well, there were a couple things that I wanted. And I said, should I ask you for something practical? or for something that's pretty that I would not ever buy myself. And she was like, um, let's get you something pretty just cause. So what she got me is this beautiful yarn bowl. It's gorgeous. And it has a star, which is my favorite shape, a little star cut out. And this is the large size bowl. I'll show you the wood grain on the inside. It's beautiful. It's signed on the bottom with its date. And uh, I don't know what the 786 is. Maybe that's the 786 bowl that Bob Huckathorn has made. I don't know. But it is so pretty. Um, so I told her that I wanted a yarn bowl because I've been wanting one for a long time, but it's, you know, they're not cheap and I don't need one. I just really wanted one. So she, I told her I wanted a yarn bowl and she was like, I have no idea what that is. So I told her to just go to Etsy and look it up. I, I may have been working or I may have been sleeping when she asked. I don't know. Um, but she found this one and 
there were two different sizes. There was a small one and a large one. And I said, well, the small one should be fine. I usually, you know, only have one skein projects, but she got me the large one. So this is a large one. It's, um, this ball is about 60% of the cake of yarn. So a full skein of, or a full ball of worsted weight yarn would fit just fine in here and probably really large, um, not the kinds that are, you know, the size of your head when you ball them up, but a large ball of yarn, cake of yarn would fit in there nicely. This is from Hecathorn Wood, or Turned Wood. They are on Etsy and um, they do several different, can you see on there? Yeah. So the wood is layered and there are different colors in some of them and they do different shapes, different cutouts, and they are um, on hecathornturnedwood.com. So it's just really, really lovely. I, I actually started working on my sweater again so that I could use the yarn ball because I'm working from the outside of the cakes. I don't know why I decided to do that this time. I just did. Um, but that means that they roll around a little bit. So the yarn bowl is perfect. It sits on my desk. I don't, the sweater is kind of a big project, so I'm not going to be walking around and knitting it at the same time. So that's my yarn bowl and I'm really, really excited about it. And it makes me want to knit on my sweater so that I can use my new yarn bowl. So yay, that's good. Cause I want the sweater to be finished eventually. While she was here, she asked me if I would make her some mittens because she goes to college and um, her campus is a wind tunnel in the winter. A, um, a guy in a wheelchair actually got frostbite going down one street last year because it was so, so cold with the wind chill. Or maybe it was a few years ago. Um, I didn't have anything really appropriate in my stash for mittens because I have a lot of fingering weight superwash and while they do help, I love my fingering weight fingerless mitts. They're not warm enough to cut against that chill. So I got Woolies Chunky so that they can be nice, thick, fluffy mittens and, um, she needed... My, my first inclination was to do 100% wool and just deal with the fact that my hands would be itchy, but she's kind of a princess about prickle factor and, um, woolies, I can knit with it. I can't wear it around my neck or anything, but my hands are okay with it. So I'm hoping her hands will be okay with it. And this is the colorway charcoal. It is the chunky, so it'll go really quickly. I am planning to make the, um, the Bella Mittens, which Diane from the Nipples has knit and um, a few other people knit them. But they're, they've got a horseshoe cable down the front. They're knit from the cuff up. I am considering knitting them from the tops down so that I can use as much yarn as possible without having to try to figure out where to put in the thumb gusset, blah, 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 um, so that I can make them long because she'll be wearing them under her coat and it's going to be really cold. So that's thoughts for the future. Um, maybe not this month, but maybe depends on how far I get on my other projects. I took my photo for what I want to finish during the month yesterday. And on the blanket is my sweater, the spinning project from ever jaws. Um, and then the child tube socks and three pairs of adult socks. But in reserve, I have these mittens that I would like to work on. I have a sweater for my sister that I will start if I finish this sweater. And then I have, oh, and the frog and were on the blanket too. Um, and then I have another spinning project that I would like to work on. So if I get finished with the socks, I will be picking up the mittens. And if I finish the sweater, I'll be picking up sweater. And if I finish the spinning, I'll be picking up the spinning. That's how that'll work. Um, I don't think that I will finish that I'll get to those other three projects, but maybe, maybe I'll be really crafty this month. Who knows? I also from Becca have, um, 
they're not really new. It's kind of reclaimed. So she started knitting at some point and then she just decided it wasn't for her. So this has been, this has made several moves with her and it has just not been touched. So this is a Ravelry project bag that, um, someone sent me at some point and I handed it off to her because she didn't have a project bag. And then inside the project bag is some yarn. She has these, this yarn that she bought for herself because she liked it and um, was going to maybe make socks for herself. So I might make socks for her out of it or I might use it for other things because at this point she doesn't care either way where it goes because she's not using it. Um, and then there are two skeins of this Premier yarns in the Viola's colorway, which I have used to make socks for my sister before. And Becca started, she was going to make herself some thigh highs. Well, she didn't work on them and didn't work on them and didn't work on them. And, um, in the meantime, she's been biking a lot, so we don't even think that these would fit her anymore. So I'm going to rip them out and I'm going to use the yarn for whatever I want. Maybe socks for her, maybe something else. I'm kind of thinking this would be a really cute hat. Who knows? So I have some new yarn. Um, she has these needles that she's not using. And are these size ones? Ooh, they look like size ones. They are in fact US size ones. So I have a new pair of sock knitting needles. That's exciting. And uh, some new yarn. So I'll be frogging the Viola's socks at some point, some point when I have time to put it on a, um, a nitty knotty sort of thing. I don't have a nitty knotty, so I'll be figuring out somewhere to wrap it so I can wash it and hang it so that some of the kinks can come out. They're not all going to come out, but you know, I have time for that. I'm not, I don't need the yarn immediately for anything. And that's all I have for you this week. That's all. It's 45 minutes over here in pre-editing land. So yeah, that was a lot of rambling. Um, but that's what I have for you. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string and I will see you next week. Bye.